Hello, I'm going to demonstrate inductance. Inductance is equal to the induced voltage divided by the rate of current change. Mathematically, the inductance of an electrical circuit is equal to the voltage induced, we use the script E for voltage induced, divided by the rate of current change. Or rearranging the EMF induced is equal to the inductance multiplied by the rate of current change. So the inductance L is the proportionality constant between rate of current change and the induced EMF or the induced voltage. For solenoid, it turns out that the inductance is equal to a constant here called the permeability constant, mu, multiplied by n squared, where n is the number of turns, multiplied by the cross-sectional area of the coil, and divided by the length of the coil. Now, uh, this might be a typical coil here. The length of the coil is the distance from one end to the other. That's the length across the coil here. Uh, the number of turns would be the number of windings on the coil. And the uh, uh, permeability constant here depends on what's inside the coil. In another movie, we'll put some different material inside the coil and show that that changes the inductance of the coil. And A is a cross-sectional area. That's a cross-sectional area of the coil. Now I'd like to measure uh, the inductance of various inductors. Here I have a little inductor, just a little coil of wire. Uh, here I have another inductor. And uh, we're going to measure the inductance starting with this smaller one here. And I have a meter here where we can uh, measure the inductance. Looks like we have that turned on. So I'll just connect this uh, wire up here, connect these wires up. And we'll measure the inductance, and we see that this is in millihenries. And we have about 0 0.022 millihenries for this small uh, inductor. Next, let's go to a, uh, a coil here, this other inductor, and uh, measure the inductance of this inductor, and see what uh, this turns out to be. To do this, I'll change scales on the meter, and we see this has an inductance of 4.03, 4 4 So this has a greater inductance than does, does this one. Now let's measure the inductance of this other inductor. And to do that, I've got to change scales again. This has an inductance of 106.4 or about 106.5 millihenries. So this has a still larger inductance. So we have uh, an inductance with a small inductance, one with a little bit larger inductance, one with still more inductance. Next what I'd like to do is demonstrate uh, the effective inductance on an electrical circuit. Here I have a circuit diagram where I have an inductor and a switch and a battery. And that actual circuit is laid out right here. Here's the battery. It's a 12-volt battery like the type we have in uh, most of our automobiles. Uh, here's an inductor here. It's a coil of wire similar to this coil here. Only uh, the, the uh, windings are actually uh, covered with an insulating material. And then we have some iron rods in the center of the inductor. That en enhances the inductance, increases the value of mu. In another movie, we'll show how that uh, material in the center of the core uh, changes the value of the inductance. So I have a fairly uh, large uh, value inductance here, 12-volt battery, and a switch. So next what I'd like to do is to, uh, is to close the switch and cause a current to flow through the inductor. So I close the switch, and now we have a current flowing through the inductor. On the circuit diagram, the switch is closed, and the battery is pumping electrons around through the circuit. So now we have a current in the inductor. Next, what I'd like to do is cause that current to suddenly change. Here's the equation for the EMF produced, proportional to the inductance, and the rate of current change. 
Now I'm going to cause a rather large change in the electric current. I'll have a current change in a very short time so we have a large rate of change of electric current. And we'll see what happens to the uh, voltage that gets produced here. So I'll suddenly open a switch, disrupt the current, and watch for a spark to jump across the gap of the switch here. So that voltage manifests itself across the gap of the switch, and it'll cause arcing to take place. There'll be a high enough electric field and a high enough voltage that'll actually ionize the, uh, the air in here and cause that spark that you see. Again, we see the voltage manifest itself across the uh, gap of the switch. Let me turn the lights down so that shows up a little better. So now the lights are turned down, and uh, I'll again close the switch, turn the current on, and quickly open a switch, and we'll see the voltage induced due to a rapid current change. One more time. Voltage caused by a current change, inductance.